Hello, in this section, we are going to focus regarding how we can deploy our Docker image in AWS. What are some options that we have in AWS using which we will be able to not just deploy, but set up CI CD and scale our container easily. The two options that you can think of already is EKS and ECS. What we will focus in the next set of videos is understanding ECS because it suits our use case currently. Our choice for orchestration will be AWS ECS. Why? Because it is one of the easiest serverless container deployment service available in AWS. Will EKS be a solution? Maybe. But are we ready to deploy big Helm charts onto the Kubernetes cluster and manage the authentication, secret management and IAM? Maybe not yet for our project. And hence, we'll be choosing AWS ECS. AWS ECS is basically a container management service. What it will give us is it will help us in the deployment and management and also scaling our containers that have been deployed on ECS. The primary requirement for this is a containerized application. Once you have the containerized application, it is all about orchestrating efficiently and that will be taken care by ECS. The underlying infrastructure can be EC2 or forget. With this, ECS also provides service scheduling. What do I mean by it? It will help us to deploy our services with flexible scheduling. It offers load balancing feature on top of the containers that have been deployed and finally the application availability. Keeping in mind that all this time, all the required resource alignment is actually handled by AWS ECS. Let us now consider some key features of AWS ECS. It has very good integrations with other AWS services like CodeBill, CodePipeline, AWS Secret Manager, etc. We will be practically seeing and interacting with these applications when deploying our container in ECS. Scalability is not an issue at all. We will also be seeing in the future demo where we will be scaling our ECS containers from 1 to 10 particular containers. Task definitions help us define version controlled definitions of our task. Container agent that will help us run our container agent. Finally, load balancing support on top of these particular containers is one of the game changers for ECS. The easy integration allows us to deploy production level applications on ECS. ECS gives us a role based access control. So you don't have to worry too much about access control on ECS. You can manage almost everything that you need from simple IAM permissions or roles. And finally, logging and monitoring integration. As we have spoken about throughout this course, when you are developing something new in your organization, you would like to know what are the errors that you can come across when you are deploying something. If you don't have an effective logging and monitoring setup coupled with your service, it is a nightmare. And none of the DevOps engineer needs it either in the development phase or in the production phase. Well, with ECS, that is not an issue at all. Now that we have understood why we are going ahead with AWS ECS, let us go ahead and create our first AWS ECS cluster. Let us now jump into the AWS console. Once I have logged into my AWS console, first verify the region that you are in. Always make sure that you are in the right region before you move ahead. In the AWS console, let me search for ECS and select the service. Let us click on create cluster and give a name for our cluster. I have given a name called as production cluster. In the infrastructure, we have multiple options as we see. Amazon EC2 and Fargate are the most used option. Between them, I recommend using Fargate for all of your future deployments. In the monitoring section, even though it is optional, you can enable the use of container insights. After this, let me click on create. This is going to create an ECS cluster for us. The whole creation process is actually taken care by the cloud formation script. If I click on view cloud formation, it will show me the cloud formation script and also the status of the cluster creation. If I refresh this particular page, you're able to see the action the cloud formation is taking for the creation of the ECS cluster. Let us come back to the ECS console and wait for the cluster to be completely created. In less than 5 minutes, the ECS cluster has been created. 
I see the success message on the ECS home page. But if I go to the cloud formation 2, I'm able to see that the stack creation has been completed. Now back to ECS, we have the cluster ready. But how do we deploy the Docker image that is present in our ECR repository into this particular cluster? It is time for us to understand what is a service and task. But we cannot just understand this by just reading the definition. Let us try to visualize this now. We have our ECS cluster. Then we have a service. A service is used to run and maintain specified number of instances of a task definition simultaneously on ECS cluster. What I mean by here is one service will be running one particular task and each of these tasks will be having multiple containers. Well, we also see task 02 and task 02 version 2. This will also be a part of another service. Here, I have given you an idea that when we want to update our tasks, we will be able to move to a new version from the same service. So basically, this is how you can remember it. A service is used to maintain and run a specified number of instances defined in your task definition. A task definition is a blueprint of your application describing the parameter and one or more containers that form your application. And finally, container is the standardized unit of the software development that holds everything your software application requires to run. I hope this was easy for you to understand. With this knowledge, let us now go ahead and deploy the Docker image that we have in ECR onto our ECS cluster. In this particular demo, we are going to deploy the Docker image onto our ECS cluster that we have created. We have also understood what is a task definition and also what is a service. And let's go to our ECS cluster now. And in the ECS cluster, let me click on task definition. Here, let me click on create a new task definition and give a name. The name I have given is called a crypto app. And in infrastructure, we are going to select AWS Fargate because the ECS cluster that we have created is also AWS Fargate. Then the OS architecture that is required, we can leave it as default and then the CPU and the memory and then the task role. In the task role, we have two options. One is called as the task option and then the task execution role. Both of these roles have different use cases complete. In our case, we don't have a task role created, so we are going to leave it as none. And the task execution role, we can click on create a new role. This is going to create a new role associated for this particular task definition. Let us now scroll down further and in the container, let us give a name here. The name of the container is crypto app. And then we have to give the image URI. From where can I get the image URI? From the ECR repository. In this particular bookmark, I already see ECR registry. So let me open this in a new tab. And here, let me go inside this particular ECR repository and copy the image URI. Come back and paste it. Scroll on further, what is the port mapping that we need? We have to always enable port 80, which is required for the ECS to verify the health of this particular container. Added to this, let us do a port mapping for our Flask application. And that would be 5000. And the mapping would be 5000 here. We can also map it to 80. Scroll on further, we can enable the resource utilization as is. And then finally, let us create the task definition. Perfect. Now that we have the task definition, let us go back to the cluster and click on create. Here in the deployment configuration, we are able to create a service. And the family will be the task definition. So we have selected the task definition that we have created earlier and the revision. Let us give a service name. A service name is crypto app. Scroll down further and click on create. Let us see if we are able to successfully deploy our image into the service and expose our application. If we do get any errors along this process, let us try to debug this and understand how to fix these particular errors. After waiting for two minutes, I am able to see that we have one out of one task running. What does it mean? It means that the container that was created out of the image that we have is running successfully. 
But on the top, you see that the crypto app deployment is still in process. That's fine. We can go ahead and understand this deployment further now. Let me click on the service. We have a lot of information on this page. But the most important one is the tasks. Our desired number of tasks is one. That is one container running. And we have one container running at the current state. And then we have the health information here of the container. I click on task here. It is going to tell us the task information. Then we have the logs and the number of deployments that has been performed, events, configuration and networking, etc. But if I have to access my particular application, how can I do it? Let me go back to the tasks and click on the task itself. In here, we have further details related to this particular task. And one information that is useful for us is the network binding. When I click on the network binding, we are going to see two of the network binding that has happened. And we are interested in our application, which runs on port 5000. Let me click on this link that is open address and it does open our application. Let us validate end-to-end -end functionality of our app. The username is admin and the password is password123. Click on login. Perfect. The page loads successfully and we are able to see different kinds of crypto application. Let us try to place an order for one. Give a name. Address. Quantity. Then click on submit order. And there we go. The whole process of the application works smoothly. Then let us click on back to product page and it works perfectly fine. So can we say our deployment was successful on the ECS cluster? Definitely yes. We were able to successfully deploy our application onto the ECS service. That is it for this particular video. Speak with you in the next video.